Hey friends, this video is about a special version of Ableton Live called Ableton Lite, but everyone can benefit from what I'm gonna show you in this video because all these features are available on any version of Ableton Live. So a lot has happened in Ableton land over the recent years. Ableton Note, which is an awesome little inexpensive app that you can grab, allows you to make music on your phone and then quickly take that idea over to your computer and flesh it out into a full song. It's kind of a no brainer for musicians when you wanna make music on the go. And it just so happens that when you get this cheap little app, you also get a free Ableton Live Lite license. Also, there are many MIDI controllers and other hardware that include Ableton Lite. So chances are that even if you're not an Ableton user, you likely have a version of Ableton Live Lite by virtue of owning something in your studio. Another thing that recently happened is that Ableton released version 12 and decided to add a bunch of super awesome features to Lite, such as the new arpeggiator and the chord MIDI devices, comping, and let's not forget that the amazing Drift synth device was recently added to all versions of Ableton Live. I think that generally folks hear of Ableton Lite and they think that you can't make music with software that's that limited. And what's so funny about this is that folks spend 10 times as much on other software and hardware that costs much, much more and have way less features than light. So what can you do with Ableton Light? Let's check it out. Okay, so the very first thing to know is that Ableton has created what we call a scale mode inside of the piano roll, and basically you can determine clip by clip what the scale of that clip is going to be. So if I click the scale button whilst having this guy uh, toggled on, you can see that all the black keys disappeared. And what we're left with is this minor pentatonic scale. And of course, if I switch this to another one, let's try a harmonic minor. We can see that only harmonic minor notes are available inside of our scale. Now, what's cool about this is that this is going to help people who aren't necessarily super versed in music theory to be able to make harmonically complex music, which is really awesome. But what's really exciting about this to me is the creative applications that you can use within devices in Ableton Live. And so let me show you what I mean. Uh, in this track, I'm using the new Ableton arpeggiator. And so listen to what this sounds like uh, in this part if I turn off the scale mode. <laughs> That's pretty weird, right? Right now, if you look at the piano roll, there's simply just one note. And normally an arpeggiator doesn't know what to do with just one note. It just goes ba 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 like on the same note, right? But uh, one thing about Ableton's arpeggiator that's cool is that you can choose a distance for each of the steps. So if I choose an octave, that's kind of cool, right? And I've got a bunch of steps here. So if I choose eight steps, we can go all the way up eight. <laughs> that's kind of cool. But what's cool about this device is that Ableton has implemented the uh, scale awareness system. So essentially you can make arpeggiator aware of what scale you're working with. And so if I turn this on, when you look down at the bottom, you'll notice that it goes from ST, which is semitones, to SD, which is scale degrees. So now I can pull this down. Let's do a three, for example, and maybe I'll pull the steps down a little bit. Now listen to this same riff. Oh yeah, how awesome is that, right? And so of course we could go up in steps. And of course we can make it faster. Go ahead and add a beat to this and play around with it a little bit. And so I could choose different distances for each one of my steps and get different chords to appear, right? And what's so great about this is that so long as you have your scale awareness system on, you can really just go hog wild with different distances and different steps and get a really colored or beautiful kind of sound coming out of your arpeggiator. And there's just so many applications for this, so many different things that you can do with it. Okay, so let's move on to the second track. And what I wanna show you here is that Ableton has also included the scale awareness system in their chord device. So right now, I just have a single note playing on this uh, part, just like the part before it. Uh, I'll go ahead and play it without the chord device. Right, so before, if you turned on chord, you would essentially have all these different static uh, notes that would be generated based off of the initial note, but they wouldn't be scale aware. So <laughs> listen to what happens without the scale awareness system. <laughs> I 
<laughs> That's kind of wild, right? But check this out. If I turn on my scale awareness system, now you get... these really awesome stacks of notes that happen to be in the minor pentatonic scale. Let's kind of move them around, maybe do some lower ones. Right, super cool. So I'll, un I'll undo that and get those uh, one intervals that I was working with before. Okay, so check this out. You also have the strum control, and what's great about this is that this is variable. So maybe at the beginning of this part, I would start it with the strum all the way at zero and then bring it up over time to add intensity. So take a listen to this. Let's go ahead and add that other part with it. <laughs> right? Super fun. So yeah, the chord and the arpeggiator device with this scale aware system is just so much fun and there is so much creative potential here. You're really going to love it. By the way, if you're a beginner with Ableton, I'm putting out a short beginner's mini course in July where I walk you through the creation of a song from the beginning all the way through export with Ableton Live. So if that sounds exciting or enticing to you, you can opt into my email list up here or down in the comments or description and I'll shoot you an email when the course launches. Anyway, let's get back to it. Okay, so moving on to the main part of this song, let's take a listen to it real quick. So over here in the uh, deep chill bass, I think something that I, I wanted to point out about Ableton intro is that even though you don't have access to all of the uh, audio effects that come with Ableton Live, you have access to just the craziest amount of effect racks. And within the audio effect rack, there's just so many amazing combinations of effects that you actually don't have access to when they are by themselves, but they're in these really cool effect chains. So let's take a listen to what I've done to this deep chill bass. So here's the deep chill bass, and what happened was is I ended up deciding to turn the tone all the way up. Here's with the tone down. And to me, that wasn't enough, so I wanted to add this basic heavy guitar amp. And if you look at the audio effects, you'll notice that amp and cabinet are actually not available to Ableton Lite users, but you can use the audio effect rack, and this is sort of like your way around that. So you can add sort of like an amp and a cabinet kind of uh, tone to your sounds. So here's with this uh, heavy guitar amp uh, preset, and I changed a couple things, of course. Really like that tone. And then I use this creative synth bus to add a little bit of like swirly chorus. And of course that was a bit too wide. So I used an Ableton utility and uh, I took the bass and made it a little bit more mono. And then there's just the side chain compressor for the kick drum of the drums, okay? So yeah, I was able to create a pretty compelling bass sound using the audio effect rack presets. I mean, look how many there are. There's just so many. This is crazy. There's so many different things to try here, right? So uh, let's move on to the drum set. So this Floriel kit and then the uh, deep chill bass, these actually come with two of the packs that come with Ableton Lite. So in addition to Ableton's core library, which is actually really extensive, there's a lot of presets and a lot of samples in there. You also get beat tools and build and drop. These are two different packs and they have, uh, you know, not only uh, drum kits, but you have, you know, one shot samples and loops and things like that. Like there's a lot in here that you just get with Ableton Live Lite. But something I wanted to show you is that, uh, you know, Ableton Lite has a limitation on its track count. But what's so crazy about this is that you actually have 128 drum slots that you could put in one drum rack. So if you think about it, that's a lot of tracks, okay, just for your drums. So take a listen to this and you'll see that I've got, you know, uh, nine different samples playing at the same time. Right? And so another thing I want to show you is that uh, Ableton has given uh, light users 
as well as pretty much any version of Ableton Live, has given them the ability to use the sound similarity feature, which can be found right here. So if I click on this, check it out. Each one of these drums now has a little arrow button, okay? And what that means is that Ableton has analyzed all of the samples inside of the browser, and what it will do is it will replace the sound that you have in that slot with a sound that is similar to that one that has a similar sonic signature, right? Uh, maybe the frequency content or how long the sample lasts or something like that. It will cycle through different samples. And so let's go ahead and cycle through some samples here and maybe get a, a more desirable sound. I like the kick drum sound, but I'm not so attached to a lot of these other sounds. Let's take a listen. Yeah, like this rim sound, I, I, could, I could do something else. So let's take a listen to what it would be like to cycle through some of the samples that Ableton is going to suggest that is similar to this one. Ooh. I like that wood dark sample, right? That's cool. Let's keep going and maybe try a different hi-hat. Cool, I like that hi-hat better. So as you can see, I'm just cycling through all these different sounds just by clicking left or right, and I can just listen, right? It's it's more of a right-brained kind of thing than, you know, you know, hunting through a million samples in your browser, right? Now, something else I want to show you is that I really like this kick drum, and so what I can do is I can lock it, okay? And so the kick drum won't change, but then I can use these arrows up here, and I can change all of the other samples to similar samples. Let's take a listen to what happens when I do that. <laughs> More of like an earthy sound, right? Right, super cool. Right, so that's just such a crazy, wild feature, right? I'm actually gonna put this back on the wood dark. So moving on to the next part, let's take a listen to this. So something that I did on track three is I used Ableton Drift, which is, if you haven't played with the synthesizer yet, it comes with all versions of Ableton Live, which is just totally nuts because to me, this synthesizer sounds nearly identical to analog poly synths that, you know, cost insane amounts of money, right? It's crazy what technology allows us to do these days. So in here, I just ended up using a chord device with some strum to get this sound here. <laughs> Super fun, right? Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is that Ableton has actually included the comping feature for Ableton Live Lite users, and this is just totally nuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to feed this pluck sound into this track here. So let's go ahead and choose Zonk Pluck as the input for this track, okay? I'm going to arm it, and I'm just going to loop this section right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess around with the different sounds inside of here and we're going to record a bunch of different takes of this track so that I can edit them later. So I'm just going to grab a delay here and that's what I'm going to use. And I'm actually going to switch this over to just their normal time mode. <laughs> so let's go ahead and record a bunch of takes of that. <laughs> okay, so I've got a bunch of takes here. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. And so I can reveal my take lanes by right clicking, show take lanes, and now I can choose from these what I want to add to this original track. So I'll go ahead and turn off the input there. I'll delete that delay and now I just have all these weird delay effects I can use. Let's take a listen. <laughs> So yeah, I think that right there, so that sounds cool. So maybe I'll just delete this part right here. Let's try the second one right there. I think I'd like to try this one here. Hmm? 
So essentially what I'm doing is I'm choosing different areas of the recordings that I think were the best takes of that delay edit that I was doing. And so of course I can create a really compelling part with all these fun effects, right? So yeah, Ableton Live Lite is really capable of making incredible music and definitely worth you checking out, especially if you happen to have it and have never cracked it open. Give it a try, you'll absolutely love it. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching everybody. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, and subscribe. So much love, see you in the next video.